The Lord of the Rings is a masterpiece. It just might be the most important film of the 21st century and its praises have already been sung far and wide. Now that said, let me destroy it. Volumes have been spoken about the effects, the narrative and the unbelievably perfect music. But this video is about the one area of the trilogy that doesn't seem to get any attention. The directing style. How does Peter Jackson frame a shot? How does he block his actors? How does he make Middle Earth feel alive? Let's find out. First, we'll go through everything that's bad about Jackson's visual style. Sorry to break it to you, but there's plenty of it. But we'll conclude with all the good stuff, which is just enough to make the whole thing work. The mushrooms! If you watch the three films paying close attention to the shots, you realize there's one type that stands out. And as big and epic as these movies are, that type of shot is the close-up. You see much, Eomer, son of Eomund. Too much. The Lord of the Rings has way too many close-ups. I would wager that some 40% of the shots in the trilogy are close-ups. If you'd like to count and comment here, be my guest. Peter Jackson likely wants to give intensity to his scenes, but this type of intense directing causes a problem. When so many shots are close-ups, they lose all effect. If a book has an exclamation mark every other sentence, then what does an exclamation mark even mean? There are close-ups in light-hearted moments, in romantic moments, in tense moments. During ceremonies, during battles, during parties, in funny scenes, in scary scenes. Every time we see this cantankerous hobbit broom in his entrance. Close-ups pack no punch in the Lord of the Rings. They're just Peter Jackson's go-to tool. Well, I'm ready for my close-up. Get in line, Norma. The power that close-ups in actual emotional and important moments should have is completely drained due to overuse. This guy gets a close-up for chuckling at Elmer's joke. You're a close-up whore, Peter Jackson. You're a close-up whore and I'm slut-shaming you. Then... There's the push-in close-up. It's when the camera approaches the actor to make the close-up even more intense. It would be a powerful tool in The Lord of the Rings if it weren't so ubiquitous. It is a gift. In this scene, Eowyn falls in love with Aragorn. Is the push-in close-up supposed to represent that? I sure hope not, cause then everybody would be in love with everybody. You don't even need to be alive to get your own push-in close-up. And if you correctly guess that it's not a mine but a tomb, then you get two push-in close-ups! This isn't a mine. It's a tomb. I believe that the over-reliance on close-ups is at least partly to hide the fact that Peter Jackson is terrible at framing and blocking his shots. This masterpiece of a trilogy is actually a perfect example of how not to block actors. Look at this. In the mountains, when Boromir gives Frodo the ring back, look at the other members of the Fellowship. They are just standing there. Jackson doesn't know for the life of him what to do with his characters. Just watch any dialogue-heavy scene. Characters do one of three things. Stand, sit and take a couple aimless steps. No interaction, no complexity. Blocking is clearly not Jackson's forte. When there's smoking or eating, at least it's something. A diversion. The blocking is so bad it gets carried on to adventure scenes. Remember the famous hero shot of the Fellowship? Take the music out and tell me what's going on. Characters walking in a straight line. And the background is beautiful. Anyway, even if the blocking were magnificent, we would barely notice, cause the framing also sucks. Despite all the care and love that went into the sets, objects and costumes, Jackson is incapable of showing them during dialogue scenes. They're featureless shapes standing awkwardly around. 
it's like the sets were built for establishing shots and nothing else. There's a celebration going on here. A couple shots show us the size of this place. Then, satisfied with already having showed enough, Jackson proceeds to use only close-ups from then on. What does your heart tell you? Though the films are an epic fantasy adventure, Jackson rarely makes proper use of his widescreen. Few shots go through the trouble of filling up the frame. But he has his moments. Here are a few good ones. Here is a shot I would call excellent. We get that Denethor is eating, we see how lush and spacious this room is, several props are in view, and it's clear that Pippin is attending his master by their positioning. So the shot gives us something of the action, the location, the time of day and the story. Then we cut to close-ups. Come on, this shot was perfectly capable of carrying the dialogue by itself. And this reveals another problem. Shots are way too short. When cutting between close-ups, it's no problem. But sometimes we need some time to take in what's on screen. When Frodo and Sam find themselves in Faramir's hideout, we get this pretty good shot that moves away from them to show the set. Nice, there's non-stop motion, they're hiding behind a water... What? You already cut? Check the moment when Elwyn takes Merry with her to battle. They just about frame her with her outstretched hand in the back. Cut to a useless sloppy closer shot of her arm, a couple more useless poorly framed shots and he's on the horse. Six shots to show one simple action. And look at these shots individually. There is so much lack of care in each of them. The reasoning behind this mess seems to be, we can shoot them indifferently, we'll stitch them all together anyway. Imagine how much better this action would be if one single shot showed her approaching in focus from the back, preferably well framed. If I'm not mistaken, the longest shot in the entire trilogy is this Gollum monologue in the ending of The Two Towers, and it's under two minutes long. I hate you. As you can tell by now, Peter Jackson's camera moves. A lot. When the scale is huge, it's epic. We'll soon get to it. But when we are in a more personal moment, then it's just nothing. The mushrooms! Why the hell is the camera slightly moving as Denethor eats here? A lot was said about all the visual trickery that went into moving the camera with forced perspective. But you know what's funny? This camera move is useless. If these moves are meant to build tension, then, just like the close-ups, they lose all effect because of excess. A camera should move to tell you something. It must follow some kind of movement and or reveal a new piece of information. And to be fair, quite a few of them do so in The Lord of the Rings. After Sam stumbles down the stairs, he wakes up and the camera reveals the bread Gollum threw away to incriminate him. In his anger, Sam decides to head back up and the camera makes it visually clear. When Frodo falls into a dream, the camera pulls back to reveal Galadriel. The same happens later when he wakes up in bed. Take a look at this truly terrific shot. We see an orc killing a man. A whip pen brings us to the chaos of battle and we settle our attention on the only soldier who's not in combat. As he looks up, the camera tilts up to follow the movement of the Nazgul. As they take men down, the camera tilts back down and frames a rushing Faramir. That's a good shot. Since we're here, let's talk about what Peter Jackson does well. First off, the sweeping wide shots.
these grand moving shots are terrific for turning what would have been just a neutral expositional image into an exciting flight of the camera. Establishing shots are turned into spectacles. Contrary to the close-ups, these wide shots with swishing camera moves are not tiresome, because they are useful. Jackson is at his best when he includes characters in his sweeping wide shots. Seeing the characters and the location from afar helps you to know where all the important players are located. It lets you get a sense of size, scale and distance. You always know the dimension of each army and the distance characters are from each other and their objectives. For all his faults, Jackson has a command of spatial continuity that all blockbuster directors should imitate. The only moment I ever found confusing is when Legolas shoots down this ladder in Helm's Deep. We have no idea where he's shooting from. Check this shot from the Fellowship of the Ring. Boromir calls for help and Aragorn answers the call. The camera flies from Aragorn, it follows the many Uruk high down the path and reaches Boromir fighting alone. We know where Aragorn is, where Boromir is, the distance from one to the other and the challenges along the way. Great visual storytelling. But still, I must point out, the framing is dog shit. You can barely make out what's going on. Bear with me here. We start off following Aragorn, though half the time he's behind trees and a wall. The camera continues without him, following random enemies. Then it decides to center on this random one's back, without even framing his whole body by the way. Now it prefers these ones from afar. Moving on. Then it moves on up high and tries to frame whichever Uruk it can catch, regardless of how unclear are their shapes and movements. It finally finds a blur behind the leaves that happens to be Boromir. I hate it. The framing is so unbelievably bad. Look at this! 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 I refuse to believe that movie professionals saw this daily and figured it was good enough. I refuse to believe it! I refuse! Oh right, this is the part of the video where I praise the directing. <laughs> Sorry, force of habit. The visual continuity is perfect. And here's a sad aside. Unfortunately, every single bad thing about Jackson's directing, poor framing, lazy blocking, excessive close-ups and too many cuts are not particular to him. They're all traits of modern cinema. Ridley Scott, Christopher Nolan, not better. Moving on. The sweeping and impossible shots are among the reasons why the trilogy works so perfectly. Even with all the cinematic problems I pointed out, these films work magnificently well because Peter Jackson makes them feel alive. The world of The Lord of the Rings leaves through details. Small actions particular props. These shots of details ultimately make the sounds and textures of Middle-earth come to life like few films in history ever did. One of my favorite moments is the ceremony Theoden uses to pick up his sword. The way it looks, feels and sounds, the audience can experience them all. Jackson's masterpiece will always be the sequence of the lighting of the beacons. A monumental story about hope is told with nothing but sweeping wide shots. And these wide shots have so much power thanks to the small details that appear in frame. It is, in every sense of the word, awesome. Jackson's battle scenes work so well despite the chaos because every character action feels unique. Yeah. 
and every hit looks and sounds real. The details given to close-ups, texture and sound also help the One Ring to feel like a character. It has its own push-ins, its own voice and its own point-of-view shots. Peter Jackson's directing strategy can be summed up as this. Everything's important. Every line of dialogue, every extra, every action, everything gets as much attention as possible. The mushrooms! That's how you can follow 9 hours of film and beg for the extended edition. Because you have no choice but to pay attention. And Howard Shore, of course Howard Shore. The Lord of the Rings might not be perfect in every way. But it is perfect nonetheless. Merle, precious.